Hey everyone, how's it going there today? Does your hot water in your house, and just the hot water, not the cold water, smell like rotten eggs? Uh, I had this problem at this house. It took me a little bit of searching. I found the answers online, but there wasn't anything I could find altogether. So I'm going to show you here today exactly what it does, what you can do to fix that, and what causes it. Okay, so the hot water, with, it, it, when it got into this house, the hot water stunk like rotten eggs really bad. It didn't stay on you. You'd shower and stuff. You didn't smell it, but it was still, it was there. You'd run it and it was, it would stink up the whole house. So I called some plumbers and they replaced the water heater, so-called experts. So I ended up doing stuff myself. Uh, there was a plumber, he would come in here and replace the damn water heater and the problem still would have been there. Because what it is, it's a reaction with the anode in the hot water heater. Uh, you just need very, very small amounts of, of sulfur in your water. You won't smell it or taste it in the cold water. It even, I tested it, it even tasted, it even tested negative for sulfur. But when the hot water heater reacts, the anode, what the anode is, it's a rod that goes down into your hot water heater. And basically what it does is it's supposed to take the corrosion instead of the hot water tank and make your hot water tank last a lot longer. So in theory, you should replace that. They start out as this long, solid rod. And if you, after five years, if you pulled one out, a lot of it would be gone. You put a new one in, in theory, your hot water heater will last a long time. Probably most people don't ever replace the anode in it. So the sulfur smell, you can fix it by pulling the anode out of the hot water heater and putting a different anode in there. I looked into it a little bit, but the method that I found here, I've been doing it for a couple of years. It just works fine for me and it lasts a couple months. So what it is, you treat the hot water heater with just regular hydrogen peroxide. So uh, basically what you do, you, uh, you isolate the hot water heater. So I'm going to shut off the cold water intake. Then I'm going to turn off the, the hot water. Um, I, this was originally solid like this. Now I know there's going to be the anti shark bite people out there, whatever. Um, for this, it worked absolutely perfect. I just got this shark bite, uh, extension here with the shut off on it. I cut the pipe, popped it on, hooked it on here. I was done in five minutes with it. And it's been, like I said, it's been on there two years, no issues at all. Um, a little expensive. I think it was 35 bucks, but you know what? It just saved a ton of time soldering, getting everything correct. Now here, I popped that on and it was done. It's down here in the basement. Ever any problems with it, it starts dripping or leaking a little. I ain't worried about it. So uh, that's what we do. So we'll shut off the cold water. So I turn that off and then I turn this off here. So then that isolates it. So that's now my hot water heater has nothing coming in and nothing will back feed from the lines up into there. So you'll need a couple of tools here. Crescent wrench. You don't need one this big. I just It's just easy to use. You don't want to over tighten that thing up there. And then you get a bucket. And what we do, we drain a little of the water out of here. So take that off. I put the bucket under here. And when they first do this, because the hot water thing is closed, not much is going to come out. So there. So just a little come out. And then I go ahead and close it back up. And that's just relieving the pressure because it's sealed off so nothing will... Nothing will come out because these are both shut. So now I can loosen this. And again, it doesn't have to be on there that tight. When you put this back on, you'll just finger tighten and turn it maybe a quarter of a turn. I put some tape on it to show you how to clean that up. You might want to turn the hot water heater off if you're worried about the electric hot water heater. You might want to flip the Flip the breaker. This is a gas one. Um, it's heated up. I'm not really too worried about it. I have a rag up here because you will get a little bit of water coming out. So then I just disconnect that. Again, you're going to get some water coming out of the pipe. Okay. So there. So that's disconnected. Mine has a little thing in here I gotta pull out so I gotta go get some gotta go get some pliers there I forgot to get that mine for, has a little like flapper valve in here I don't know what it is if someone knows what it is put it in the comments I would like to know what it does tried looking it up I don't know it might be a check valve prevent stuff from going back up in whatever 
I'm back. Okay, I'm back. So I had to get the pliers. So I just pull this little thing out of here. Now I have forgot to put it in before. It didn't do anything. I just left it out there. So now that is out of there. So now you can continue to uh, continue to drain the water. <clears throat> You don't need to drain the whole thing. You just want to drain enough to get the peroxide, what you're going to put in there. So now with the valve off out there, it comes out freely. And you can see it just stinks. I guess the rotten egg that's coming up really smells. So. Okay, that actually should be good. Yeah, that should do it. So what you put in, you put in about 10 ounces for every, eight ounces for every 10 gallons that your tank holds. I have the, the 16 ounces here. So I end up just putting like, I think I put like three of these in and it seems to do the trick. So, so now everything's closed back off. And you can just pour the peroxide in. You might want to use a funnel, but I've got it down pretty good. I only spilled a little bit. But if you're worried about it, use a funnel. Don't can't do it too fast. It will come back up out. I think this water heater. I think someone told me this anode rod is integrated with this filler. So this is if I wanted to change the anode rod, I think I have to take all this thing apart to pull it up out of there because there isn't. A lot of times you'll see there's another plug on here, like a hex, like a just a big nut it looks like. And if you loosen that, then your anode rod comes out. This one doesn't have it, so someone told me it's integrated with the fill tube here. So again, it bubbles up if you go too fast. Thought I read somewhere once to, it makes a difference sometimes what side you put it in. I don't, I don't know. I think one of these rods goes down farther than the other. Again, if somebody, if there's a pre, if there's a better side to put it in, put it in the comments. Um, I've always used the, the hot water output. Never had any problems. It treats it. It's good. It works. It lasts for a couple of months. And I did thought there was one that works better because it feeds one of the tubes goes all the way to the bottom of the tank and. And uh, it feeds the peroxide in better. So this, uh, we got lucky. We this, this is the COVID, the COVID pandemic here, and uh, <laughs> the stores were all sold out of peroxide a couple months ago. But I. I just done it, so I, I always like to keep some bottles here on hand so when it starts to sink, I can put it in. So I went to buy some extra, and I don't know, everybody was buying peroxide to, for for because of the pandemic. Hand cleaner, you know, toilet paper, you're all heard it on the news. So, but anyways, that peroxide was sold out, and actually, we just got this a couple weeks ago, and I I grabbed a few of them, so I got enough for two more treatments, and that lasts. Like I said, this treatment will last two to two to six months. I was buying it in the drugstore and the lady goes, oh, you're getting a lot of peroxide. And I told her what it was for. And she goes, oh my gosh, my, that really fixes it. She said, our cabin, we have a, we have a cottage on the, up at the lake, a little cabin. And oh my gosh, she said, it always stinks. I said, this will do it for you. Let's get some peroxide and put it in there. So it's a pretty common problem. And I think it's pretty common that the cottages, again, you know, people that have seasonal homes or places that the hot water sits unused. It seems to, I know if we go away, it seems to it seems to speed up. If you don't use the hot water every day, the smell seems to come in a lot quicker. I'm just doing this. I I could speed this up. I'm not going to. I'm keeping it real time. Just fast forward. 
I just want you to see how long it takes it. It doesn't really take that long to do this. So there's three of them, 16 ounces. That's all I need to, that usually does it. And I clean the, uh, I do put, I'll go get some uh, tape and put on here. And just make sure if you, if you, I think it's a good idea to put a little, uh, little, te little Teflon tape on there. And I just like to make sure that I clean the, clean the old off of there good. So I got a little wire brush that I use for that. Okay, there's the wire brush I just like to get. Get all that old Teflon off of there. And wipe it off good and then. I don't know on this stuff. I'm always, I'm always someone out there. I'm sure I'll, I'm, if I'm, let me know if I'm wrapping it the right way. I always wrap it the same way that I screw the fitting on. I don't know if that's right or not. Again, let everyone know if this is wrong. Just put it in the comments. But that's what I do. I just wrap it the same way that I, I've looked it up and. So there, so that's that, and then we just put this back on. Oh, see, I told you, don't, this little thingy, whatever that thing is. Again, if someone knows what it is, let me know. Put that back in. And we can thread our fitting back on. Don't get a cross threaded, that would not be good. Snug it down. I just go until I feel a little resistance and, and a few more turns. Uh, a few more turns, like a quarter turn. It's like a rubber washer up in this thing, so. There, and I feel it a little bit. There we go, just. That should be good. So then I can, then we got everything shut off, then. Turn this back on. Finish filling it up. And that always drips a little, but we got well water, so it uh, it quits dripping pretty quick. There's a little rag under there, and that needs fixed. It's on my list. I'll get to it. There's that. And that's it. Now let it sit for three to four hours. Um, I just turn this on for a second and then I turn it back off. So if somebody's upstairs, it's good to sit in here. Um, I have read things where they say to open that, turn on the valves, let the peroxide suck up into the lines. Welcome to do that. I don't do it and don't have a problem. Um, I've never, uh, never done that, but if you want to go ahead and do that, just you open that, go upstairs, open the hot water faucets. There's so many hot water. I don't know. We got, you know, one, two, three, four, but this house has three bathrooms in it. Don't even use, don't even use one of them. But, um, you know, in the kitchen sink and the island sink. So I just don't bother with it. I just let it set in here and that seems to do the trick. And then what I do do is after three or four hours, open this up, then I go upstairs and I open the, all the hot water faucets and let them run until hot water comes out and then shut them down. And that brings some peroxide up into those lines and kind of treats them. So. That's it. And then your hot water uh, rotten egg smell will be gone for two to three months and you're good to go. And so, you know, you spend 10, 15 minutes every couple, every two, three months. Again, you may have to water. I've seen guys that hard plumb this in and they'll actually put, they'll come down, hard plumb this in. Uh, they'll put a shut off up here. They'll come down with a T. Then they'll come over, go up with another shut off. And then they'll have a little standpipe that sticks straight up here so that they don't have to unhook this to fill it. I planned on doing that, but lazy. Too much other stuff going on, so I've just left it this way. I unhooked that, put it in, and uh, it's good to go. So um, this water heater is fairly new. When If this water heater goes, then when I get the new water heater, I'll have them switch the anode out before they install it. And then I wouldn't have to do this. They put... You'd have to look it up. I, I'll, it, there's a certain material anode that, 
that works that won't react with that and uh, give you the give you the rotten egg smell. So I hope that helps somebody. Simple fix, and it makes your hot water use much more enjoyable. Thanks a lot.